Hi everyone. In chapter four, we're going to take a brief look at the history of numeration systems. There are two goals for this unit. The first is to develop an appreciation for the, the background behind why we adopted the numeration system that we did. Ours is called the Hindu Arabic system. And the second goal is to reinforce your understanding of some of the key properties of our numeration system. The fact that we use place value is one of those things. So we will look at sections 4.1 and 4.3. And in 4.1, there's a, a distinction that we need to make between number and numeral before we go on and look at some of the early numeration systems. So try this exercise first. See how many different ways you can think of to express the concept of three. Right? How would you can communicate three to someone else? All right, so one option is, you know, maybe just writing out T-H-R-E-E, -E, that's three. Okay, another is this numeral, three, right, the symbol. And how many other ways can you think of? All right, so keep in mind we can use written methods, we can use spoken methods. You could do some sort of a, an acted out method, like mime the concept of three. All right, but the gist here is that there are many ways that we can describe this concept. Uh, what about different languages? All right, different ways to say three. So let's make a distinction here. A number is a concept or an idea used to represent some quantity. All right, so we have this idea of three that we can convey in multiple ways. A numeral is a symbol that's used to represent a number. There are many numerals that can all represent one single number. So numerals, all right, we could use three. All right, how about the Roman numeral three? All right, and you may be able to think of a few others as well. So as we go through this section, you'll, you'll see us using the term numeral quite a bit, a numeration system. And these are just different ways to represent or describe numbers. Right, so from your textbook, a numeration system consisting of a set of symbols, consists of a set of symbols or numerals to represent numbers and a set of rules for combining those symbols. So ours is called the Hindu Arabic numeration system. And sometimes we'll also call this a base 10 numeration system. We always group things by tens. So we talk about the tens, the hundreds, the thousands, uh, different numeration systems used different bases. A lot of them were base 10, um, but some were not. So the Hindu Arabic system originated in India and it was brought to Europe during the 15th century by Arab traders. Now we'll look at some other different numeration systems and we have four main types. We have the tally, a tally system, a simple grouping system, a multiplicative grouping system, and a positional system. So we'll look at some historical examples and you can kind of um, look to see as we go through which one of these you think our numeration system is. So first, a tally system, you usually use tally sticks, and you've seen tally marks before. Um, you know, you just count by ones and make little tallies. That this would have been more of an ancient version. A more modern version is to start crossing uh, every fifth tally, right? So that would be five could add on and make 10 and so forth. So here are some examples. Um, an early example of a tally stick is the Labombo bone. Uh, one estimate is that this is from 35,000 BC, uh, depending on the age of the earth, um, you know, and who's saying that, that may or may not be accurate. Um, but it's a, a very old bone and it's thought to be an early calendar, right? So they would have used notches to mark off uh, maybe days or weeks or months or something like that. Okay, here's some other examples on the right, different tally sticks. And we can see examples of these in uh, some more modern cultures as well. Uh, Swiss shepherds would have used tally sticks to help count their sheep. And you can see um, on the left here we have a good example of some sticks that would have looked similar to the Swiss ones. And you may even notice some similarities with the Roman numeration system. Uh, when they went to mark five, they put two of these tallies together, make sort of an upside down V shape. Here we have a right side up one. Um, crossing them would indicate a 10. 
and x is the symbol used as a Roman numeral for 10. And then on the right, these are 13th century tally sticks, and these, these are um, from the National Archives in Great Britain. These would have been similar to sticks used in English accounting. So what they would do is, um, if there was some sort of a debt that needed to be repaid, or that was still owed, then the person who owed the money would have one stick, and the person loaning the money would have another, and they would match up. So these would have come in, in like a pair, right, and be, be split lengthwise. And then they would have had some sort of a marking, or perhaps notches, kind of going along here. And then when they split the stick and gave one half to each person, then each person had a record of how much was owed. Um, and either one could change the tally, now you couldn't add a notch or kind of scratch one away because then the stick wouldn't match up with the other person's. So it was kind of a, a way to keep um, things honest and kind of an ancient form of a receipt. Um, this was the, a similar idea to uh, tally sticks used in French bakeries. Um, people would come in and buy loaves of bread but not pay every single time. So let's say that they had an account and maybe paid for bread once a week or once a month. Um, then they would make notches on these sticks to mark how many loaves were purchased, and then each person, uh, the baker and the customer, would each keep one half of the stick. If you're interested in this, I got some of this information from the Universal History of Numbers, and that's by uh, George Ephra. Ephra? Right. And he's uh, traveled around the world for about 10 years, to research and write this book, and it gives a, a good history of uh, numeration systems and numbers, um, how we counted and uh, developed different ways to record numbers, things like that. Um, it is written from an evolutionary perspective, so I can't wholeheartedly recommend it, but it does have some interesting information and quite a few diagrams and figures as well. Okay, that's an introduction to numeration systems. And in the next video, we will begin looking at some specific ones uh, advancing beyond the tally system because we that's um, not a good way to keep track of large sums of numbers. So we'll go on and look at the Egyptian system in the next video.